Right, um, today's office. We're in a field, somewhere near the Ashdown Forest. A few rabbits running around. Um, bit of a scan. Um, just about this is the edge of the Ashdown Forest, really. Um, yeah, probably be a load of rabbits over the brow of this hill. Whatever. Um, the last, the last uh, video, I was talking about um, thinking of songs as having some sort of animation of their own as a sort of creative process. Um, it's a really powerful way of getting your head out of the game and getting the unconscious free to um, create. That's the psychotherapy point of view, obviously from an animist point of view. It is the song arriving fully formed, which is what I was saying that one of the Keith Richards quotes of writing songs, that they're already there. You just have to find them, hook them in. Um, a lot of people lose that ability to be creative. Children have got it, adults haven't. There's the famous experiment with a paper clip. You know, how many things can you do with a paper clip? And obviously the younger children are, who don't actually know what a paper clip is, they, ha they have, you know, whatever, hundred ways of uses for a paper clip, and then as you get older, and seemingly more intelligent, you end up with about three or five or something ridiculous. That doesn't really bode well, does it, if you think about it, from the point of view of education. It's certainly not allowing the brain to problem solve. Um, it sort of brings into the question exactly what education's about. Um, in my darker moments, <clears throat> And being involved in education for, I don't know, 40 plus years. Um, it just seems to be trying to get people to conform to something so they can sell you something. Um, education has become more and more subtle in the way that it controls people. Um, if you think about it from the point of view of of stripping you of your ability to think for yourself and only following instructions. It's very good at that. I think the most telling thing of this was when I read that about how the Native American people, of a, um, education was used as a tool for um, stripping them of their identity. And when you realise it's being done for that, that's pretty shocking because you realise it's the sort of thing that's being done to you anyway. But we've already been sort of culturally affected it. So it's not like us trying to deprogram, you know, native people or, or even gypsies, of course. We, we got very good at doing that. You know, we did it to the Welsh, we did it to the Scots, we did it to the Irish. Uh, it's pretty shocking. Anyway, on a better note, what can we do that makes a difference for us? You know, Although I'm obviously viewing these things from a musical point of view of writing or from a creative point of view artistically, it's also a great tool for coming up with ideas for things. So it can be used as an entrepreneurial skill. Um, the problem is, is in the thinking. Because, let me just sit down for a while. A lot of ground ivy here. Interesting stuff. Anyway. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. 
bird song in the background. And also there's an aeroplane. As I say, we can't get away from man. So, how do we stop the, this problem of how the brain, the intellectual part of the brain kicks in and starts limiting us? Um, and this is really where techniques such as cut-up are particularly good. Now I'm going to be talking about cut-up cut up in a lot of detail. Um, and I will be probably running a course on this, on the site, because obviously all these things are just enabling people to get the mindset difference. But a lot of this stuff requires serious work. Um, not in an intellectual point of view, but you start to have to think in a different way. So in a nutshell, Cut-up is putting random bits of information together. Um, William S. Burroughs and um, Gleison used um, articles out of magazines, which they'd sort of cut up and then reorganise the, the phrases or sentences, but you don't have to do that. You just have to take random things out of, out of books, magazines, poems, uh, whatever, and then stick them on a piece of paper and and then see what happens. And the thing to look for, and again this is something I'll have to go into in a bit more depth, but there's a sort of a central image that comes out of it, an idea, which is like the soul of the bit that's coming, you know, the soul of the song. Um, and then that is what really writes the song. Again, we'll, this will be going into much more de detail on this, but cut-up doesn't stop there. It could be just random things. You know, if you're walking down the street, it could be adverts on a billboard. Um, it could be overheard bits of conversation, because lots of people walking around now um, talking in phones, a bit like me. But as you can see, I'm doing that. You know, they've just got something sticking out their ear. Um, and in the past, of course, we just would have thought these people were demented. But now we realise they're on the phone, or we assume they're on the phone. So you can get little bits of conversation, you can write that down. Um, overheard snatches of things off the radio or lyrics in somebody's car um, sound system. This is the sort of thing that Burroughs would have done. And then these things fit together and you can sort of move them around and see what you come up with. It's a brilliant technique. Burroughs was using it for, for books, poems, forms of artwork, the whole collage effect. So, see about this, it's getting your head out of the game in this one and um, allowing something to happen. The next aspect of this, and we'll cover this in, a, in another video, it'll be editing. When does the intellect come back into play? So, I'll talk to you then.